You're listening to IRN, the Inception Radio Network, Chicago, Illinois. To Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Welcome to Center of Light Radio. I am that guy, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement. Strap in all ye spiritual astral knots as we launch for inner space. Wow, what an amazing experience I had last week. I am a blessed man to impart to you, the listening audience, information that was given to me by spiritual masters through my guest tonight, Madra Gail Little. Center of Light Radio has now been, giving, uh, has now been given uh, by those masters, those spiritual masters, full support and is now in alignment to be a superhighway for conscious evolution. Madra and I, during this experience, were both told that what will now come down through the pike, through this platform, will be of the highest calling and a beacon of light, hope, and wisdom as we move further into the window of absolute world change. And for this, I accept, I allow, and I appreciate. The future of Center of Light Radio has been sealed. We're going to talk a little bit uh, tonight about this particular experience that Madra and I had. And as well as many other things, synchronicity and energy and all, all my favorite, absolute favorite subjects. Make sure to go to Center of Light Radio website. You do that by going to centerofLightRadio.com. While you're there, you can check out all the archives of my past shows. There's lots of really cool stuff there. All my books, my bestseller, The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth. Link to my documentary movie, Do What You Love, A Path to Passionate Living. You can also jump a uh, seat from there and go to KeithAnthonyBlanchard.com and make sure you download the free Anchoring Heaven on Earth audio meditation. It'll put you in that magical place, that magical space, where you can launch that which you want to call to you in your life effortlessly it's not about going to work and eking out a living and having the money to having these resources to buy those things that you just want to have in your life it's about getting into that magical creative space where there's such an amazing stillness and in that stillness is where you plant your creative ideas make sure you check out the anchoring heaven on earth free audio meditation at keithanthonyblanchard.com let me see i'm reviewing my notes again welcome to the show here um, to call into the show, to talk to myself or Madra Gale, little, my wonderful, amazingly powerful guest tonight, dial 888-919-2355. That's 888-919-2355. Remember, 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 if you're not at home by your computer and you want to hear your fave show, you can go to the app store on your phone and download the Inception Radio Network app for free. Everything is at your fingertips. Chat room, li listen, live link, news, podcasts, much more. There are many, many ways to connect to Center of Light Radio and Inception Radio Network. Let's see. Notes, notes, notes. Uh, the Center of Light Radio would like to welcome Professor Eric R. Williams with his show Psychology's Out of Limits on June 7th and Patricia Baker with her show Supernatural Girls on June 17th. Center of Light, as well as Inception Radio Network, we want to welcome you uh, to this amazing, 
amazing platform. I'm, I'm really digging it. I've been here about a month and a half, maybe just right under two months. And I'm just really, really loving the team and everything that Inception is about and stands for. Now it's time we get down to Center of Light Radio Business. On the Center of Light today, my guest is Madre Gale Little, and we, we, we will be discussing energy and synchronicity. Madra says, energy is in everything. Everything is energy. Energy is a tool and resource to navigate on this physical journey. The more you understand about energy, the more you understand the bigger picture and plan. There are no coincidences or accidents. In fact, if you look at the word coincidence, it's two e events coinciding, coincidence. Everything is synchronistic. The universe conspires to facilitate for us through synchronicity. Synchronicity is our life on purpose. Ooh, I like that. Our lives are sculptured energetically through synchronicity. Madre Gale Little, conscious channel, practitioner of the healing arts, vibrational resonance, resonance practitioner, certified hypnotherapist, facilitator for personal and spiritual growth. Having experienced a complete transformation in late 2001, which I can definitely attest to, uh, which she contributes to the crystal skull consciousness. Madra has been facilitating the journey of self-discovery and self-realization for others for over a decade. A gifted intuitive, she utilizes hypnosis, crystals, sound, and color as tremendous tools in raising vibration and changing lives. Her essence is extremely effective in facilitating spiritual evolution and soul integration. I can so not wait to jump into what we're going to talk about. An important part of helping others is in sharing life experiences, for it's in sharing that we realize our true identities and abilities. Sharing uplifts and empowers us, serving as a catalyst for remembering. As a facilitator of transition and transformation, she currently serves in various capacities for those seeking guidance and navigating on their journey. She is a pioneer in vibrational resonance through sound and is known for her sound meditations in Memphis, Tennessee and surrounding area. She helps others connect with their own innate gifts and abilities on their soul's journey and coaches them in getting their creative and productive energies flowing, which is vital to living a fulfilled life and being on purpose. The focus and intent of her work is to restore balance, facilitating healing, at every level and assisting others in the return to grace. Whew, that's lovely. She facilitates events, workshops, meditations, and represents the divine feminine in restoring balance to the planet. Services offered, hypnotherapy, intuitive, energetic, and soul reading, spiritual and personal coaching, vibrational sound healing, dream interpretation, Reiki, and long distance healing. Madra Gail Little, my dear friend and powerful light in my life. Welcome to the Center of Light Radio. Well, thank you, Keith. It's awesome to be here this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Uh, I, I want to get right away into the topic. I, I made contact with you last week. I wanted a session with you. I want to support you in your beautiful work, which I knew you were always about. <laughs> Little did I realize when I sat in the captain's chair in your office, and you begin to do what you do so powerfully, capitalize the word powerfully, exclamation point, bold print, underline three times. When I sat in that chair and you stated the intention, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the invocation. Mm -hmm. Listening to you, listening to the place where you come from inside as you are saying this intention, uh, this invocation. I didn't hear you just saying words. I felt your authenticity, your groundedness. And not only did that move me, as you began to um, use this sound healing therapy on me and doing what you do, as I, when I was in India in 2000 to see Sathya Sai Baba, I was there for two weeks, and I went into this particular temple where, it, it believe me, it is the holiest of holy things on this planet. And because my vibration wasn't as, as high as it could be, I could not really see the pictures that donned the walls, I really couldn't see until I got into the space. But once things started to happen, and 35,000 people go into a chant, my physical body began to melt. And there was nothing left but my essence. Point of bringing this up, when I sat in your chair, 
and you begin to do this, whatever it is that you would do to me, sound healing and just your intentions. I felt the same experience. I was split in half. Um, my essence, my core was exposed as you begin to not only move away some of the uh, energies that were no longer serving me, but also polish, refine, wax, and make new um, some things. But Madri, in that experience, I begin to have a connection with the divine through many facets of many, many masters. Um, what was this like for you when this was experience was being had uh, that you were performing on me? It's always a very powerful experience for me. Um, I get, I just get completely surrender and get out of the way when I go into my work. Um, I've learned that that's just because I am so sensitive and such a strong empathic. That is the only way that I can do the work. And so I literally just surrender to the energies as a clear and perfect channel for love, light, and truth to come through. So it's always very powerful for me. It's very humbling because I'm seeing everything that's taking place. I'm feeling it, but I'm absolutely seeing it as well. And I see exactly what is facilitated for the person who is receiving at that time. And you can't give without receiving. So I always receive as well, but it's always such a beautiful, humbling experience to be a facilitator for that and be a part of that um, experience for that person who's ready to move into a higher, different aspect of themselves. When the, when the session was happening, I was having experiences with masters. I was having experience with divine light. There was a goddess, if you will, um, mm -hmm. stand before me in this emerald green dress. And, you know, people may say, well, Keith, how do you know that? <laughs> Well, trust me, when this happens, you know it. There is no guessing about it. But all these things that were happening to me, I was waiting for coming out of the experience. And as you said, you cannot give without being a receiver yourself. You literally validated without me saying anything to you. Everything that was transpiring, even the goddess that stood before me, and I think you named it as Solera. Yes, yes. Yes, I, and that's, you know, that's part of the experience as well when I facilitate for others in that manner. Um, that's the reason you were so um, excited and enthusiastic and you wanted to share with me. And, and, and as I told you, it's best if, if you just let me open up and share with you what I saw because then it becomes validation for you because I absolutely need no validation. It's not about me. It's about the person that's receiving. So to be able to share with you what I experienced, you know, what they, what they said to me, the messages that I got, the visions that I got, what I experienced um, at a sensory level, this validates you and your experience, which you received, the messages coming in, the activations, the attunements, all of that that's received during the session. So um, it's, it's awesome. But yeah, so when I share that with someone and then they come back and they say, well, that's exactly what I saw. You know, it may be just a little bit different, but most of the time, 99, you know, 95 to 99% of the time, it, it coincides very closely. It was amazing for me. Sitting in that chair it would be the equivalent if you're used to riding in a plane and then you get the opportunity to sit in a space shuttle with all that horsepower under your butt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, listening audience, when you walk into Madra's um, healing facility, there's every type of stone, every type of gem. They're all under your chair. They're all over the building. When you walk in this place, you, you literally have no choice in the matter but to vibrate to higher energies. When I was in this experience, like you, um, validating what I was receiving, I was receiving the message that I imparted to the listening audience at the top of the show when I was going into my spiel, um, you know, the opening of the show, that these masters uh, are now allowing, which they have always in my life, but at least at this point of my radio host journey, they are really going to start pushing um, this kind of high level vibrational energy through the center of light radio. And you did receive that information as well. Yes, I did. Absolutely. I did. 
And, you know, I'm bringing this up not as a brag yay for Keith, but the idea and for the reasoning that um, Center of Light Radio, if you think about everything that is in the connotation of Center of Light, that's exactly what my intention has been for many, many years as a spiritual teacher uh, was to create that kind of super highway for the upliftment of humanity. And so I want to say thank you very much for allowing me to come to your beautiful facility and doing what you do so well that you did on me. I'm, I'm truly grateful. Uh, I'm grateful to be a part of the experience as well, Keith. I'm honored that that you chose, again, it's all synchronicity, that you you, you, uh, connected with me when you did wanting to set up a session. And I knew the moment that you connected with me, as I do with a lot of people, I knew that that there was um, something that was coming up the pipes for you, uh, uh, giving you, let's say, a new part of your mission uh, that would be forthcoming, and you were already moving into it. So this was just the the uh, closing touches on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I might have to go sit back in your chair just for the sheer enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, in closing, uh, the story about my experience with you uh, last Tuesday was I I told you that I kept receiving over and over and over towards the end of this experience the Lazarus effect, the Lazarus effect, the Lazarus effect. And as soon as I walk out of your office, I get in my phone, I check messages, I check Facebook, and someone invites me to join the group. Uh, <laughs> The Sons of Lazarus. So I thought it was a nice piece of synchronicity there, which brings us to our show today about synchronicity. I love the subject. Tell me, uh, tell the listening audience what synchronicity is for you and how it works in your life and the magic behind the whole idea. I have learned that synchronicity is the your life on purpose, as I say, and I've come to realize that we set that in motion with our intentions um, as we move forward in our lives. I remember back in, um, I'm going to say in, in the early 2000s, uh, just before things began popping for me, that uh, setting things into motion of what I would like to be doing at that time and not really thinking in that moment that it's even possible you know, in, in at a heart level, you think, well, that would be really awesome, but you really can't see exactly how it might happen. But in that moment, the universe grabs that intention because it is part of your life purpose. And all of a sudden, you have reached that place where you're ready to step into that. You don't always know exactly what it's always going to entail. And if you did, you might not step into it so wholeheartedly <laughs> in the beginning, right? But, you know, I've, you know, what I've experienced in the last 15 years, thanks to synchronicity, I look back and it goes way beyond 15 years. But um, I look back over the whole, my, the whole of my life and I see how synchronicity has played a part in my intention, my connection with my faith, my, my guidance, my, you know, the source energy, my heart and soul, and how it's come to fruition and where it is right now. And the understanding now, like I've never understood it before of the energy and how everything is energy and energy being a tool and a resource for us and how we utilize that energy to create and synchronicity uses our thoughts our words and our actions to create uh you know the universe through synchronicity uh uses our words our thoughts and our actions to create for us that which is on purpose for us in our life and on our journey so you know, I learned um, years ago when somebody said, you know, there are no coincidences, there are no accidents. I thought, hmm, I'm going to have to think about that for a little bit. But as I have progressed in my own evolutionary process, I absolutely see that everything is on purpose. You know, everything serves a purpose. Everything serves, whether it's for me or for someone else in that moment. You know, I may not realize the purpose of it in that moment. I may be facilitating for someone else, but it's, it's there is a there's purpose for everything. And just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just like gravity, just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that you're not going to hit the ground if you jump off of a building. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, perfect story. Years years ago, I had a small meditation group in my house, and some friends come over, and we were waiting on other friends. And until then, I was just using some tarot cards and throwing some things around. And I looked at a friend of mine by the name of Kenya. I said, Kenya, you're, I was actually given a group reading. I said, Kenya, your spirit guides are laughing at you. He said, why is that? I said, because they're about to do something in your life in the very near future that you will not literally be, be able to contain yourself. He said, well, tell them to bring it on. I said, well, okay, I guess it's on its way. Well, a friend of mine shows up. 
And she decides to walk in and we sit down and she says, what are you talking about? We're talking about synchronicity. And that was the subject at the time. And um, then and they asked, well, how does synchronicity actually work? I said, well, I said, if you imagine uh, I'm watching a particular uh, program or you and I have a dialogue and um, I'm watching a particular program and you and I begin to talk about Cyclops for whatever reason. I use the word Cyclops. And so, you know, that's kind of funny. I'm actually watching a show right now about Cyclops. And then if Carrie would call. Um, for some reason, Cyclops comes into the conversation. So that is not a very, uh, very common subject that's talked about. But yet in the three minutes, this comes to the fore. And so this would be somewhat of a synchronicity. And then Carrie proceeds to say, what did you just say? And I said, we were talking about Cyclops. And she takes off a baseball cap and she has a hat pin with the word, with, with an image of a Cyclops on it. And of course, my friend Kenya was so elated and so moved by it, he got off the floor and literally could not contain himself. So my point is, the whole experience uh, was birthed, happened, and completed itself in a matter of moments. Yeah. So um, from, from, if I may read from the divine principle, I ask God or spirit higher self, you know, so where does synchronicity come from? How does it manifest and what does it mean? And in my experience with the divine, as I'm writing the divine principle, it says, um, synchronicity is born out of my essence in the causal realm. From there, it swirls through the mind and into your feelings, aligning events around you on the earth plane. But coincidences have no significance other than to get your attention through higher means so that you can grasp the very alignment that you are in. Yes. So like Dr. Mark Weiss says, it's not always about the magic of what you're receiving. It's the fact that you are able to grasp that you are in an, in, in an alignment. Would you agree with that, love? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's those little, um, those little signposts along the way that say you're on that yellow brick road. Hmm. I wish they would happen a little more. <laughs> well, I, and you know that we say too, we get caught up in our life and everything. It's happening instantaneously all the time. You know, it is one of those things that is the magic of life. That is the magic of our journey. The more we are focused on that and not saying that we're uh, lost in that focus, but the more we're paying attention, the more we see. I mean, it's like everywhere you look. I experience that every day now, and it's just, it is, it's like magic to me. I love it, and I'm so grateful for it on a daily basis, and I tell people, this is what you look for, you know? The universe is always giving you confirmation and validation and signs letting you know you're on, the, you know, this is what you were asking for. You're on the right path. This is going to, this is going to take you further uh, in that direction that you were seeking at that time. So the more we're paying attention, you know, the more we're focused on that vision and moving forward as opposed to being distracted or caught up in uh, drama or other people's drama or the, just the drama of uh, the collective at, at the present time. You know, the more, uh, the less we're caught up in that, the more we're going to see that the, those synchronistic signposts um, all throughout our life. I, you know, I'm constantly amazed by, in my own journey, but also in those that I uh, provide services for, how they'll come to me and say, you know, you told me about this, this, and this, and the moment I walked out of here, just like you were saying, the moment I walked out of here, I, I hear this on the radio or I saw this or this person came to me and said this and it's like absolutely you know you, you can't make this stuff up just all it is is about paying <laughs> yeah. attention yeah yeah Be you, mindful. You know yeah, absolutely. And again, you, you brought up the same example I gave earlier about when I walked out of your office, um, I kept hearing uh, the Lazarus effect, the Lazarus effect. And I show a look on my Facebook and there's someone inviting me to join a group called the Sons of Lazarus. Now, most people will say, OK, Keith, well, let's just call that quote. Let's use the old paradigm coincidence. It's likely something like that would show up because you're into so many spiritual things. The odds uh, that something like that would show up was pretty good. So let's no, 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 no. No, no, that is what exactly what we're talking about. That is the synchronicity. Yes. Those kinds of signs, like you said, there are no accidents. Everything is energy. Everything is responding to your tapestry, uh, which you move. The tapestry is responding. So those little things in my life, in your life, listening on it, whoever you may be, those little connecting dots kinds of experiences, when you pay attention to those, then the synchronicity and the events that begin to happen in your life become bigger, grander, faster, more awesome. 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, one of my teachers once told me, you know, when we ask for something from guidance uh, from the universe and then it shows up and then we go, oh, my gosh, I don't believe this. We slapped slap them in the face. You know, we close the book in their face. So, so, you know, she, you know, one of her, her big messages was when something shows up, it doesn't matter in that moment. If you think, wow, this is too good to believe, just keep your mouth shut and say, thank you. Yeah. What, what can it hurt? I mean, right. <laughs> the only thing it can do, right. It yeah. can only, it can only help. So let's say someone comes across this radio show, uh, in the near future and they say, okay, I understand the idea things that I might in my past have called, uh, coincidences or, um, I get the idea that they may mean something. How can one begin to accelerate, implement certain ideas, certain practices in their life other than I guess, is the tool just becoming aware? What else yeah. to the formula they can add to bring about their vision, their ability to, to cite such coincidence or to make them happen, however? Um, yes, the, the one of the main tools is becoming aware, being mindful, paying attention. You know, when somebody asks for a sign and then they're not paying attention, and I tell people a lot of times, you can even give the universe the sign that you want to receive every time you ask to see a sign. Uh. And they love it because they don't have to go through this long list of throwing out these signs and hearing you go, <laughs> well, I asked for a sign, but but I never received it, you know? So I know what my sign is, and it doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing. When I ask for a sign from the divine, I have that sign that shows up. I don't care where I am. And it is just the universe's way of saying, we heard you. We got your back. And it, it always instills a, a sense of peace and calm for me. So it is about making that connection, being aware, being mindful, expressing gratitude for all that's coming through and guiding you. Because, you know, when we ask for changes in our lives, when we're ready to move forward in a different light or in a different path or purpose or in a different part of our journey, you know, the universe begins in that moment when we express that intention and that desire, it begins uh, constructing that, orchestrating that for us. So it is a matter of being mindful and attentive to what's showing up on your path, you know, after you express that intention. Or, you know, I'll tell people, you know, when they say, well, this, you know, certain things happened uh, about a year ago, and these are the things that came into play for me. And I was like, what, what, where were you in that moment? You know, that you express that you want to change that, you know, what kind of change did you express when you when you think back on it, if you can think back that far, <laughs> some of us can, some of us can't. It depends on if we slept last night. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you think back on it, you can see how you set things into motion just with your intentions, your desires, your prayers, you know, what have you uh, in that moment and how things begin to change for yourself. And then you can see how the universe conspired to synchronistically set it up for you. OK, if you're paying attention and if you're not, you might take a little bit of a detour you, and, and chances are you'll find your way back. But it's going to be a little bit longer of a journey. But it's always, always being orchestrated for us. Um, and it, it is just you know, the biggest tool is about being mindful and attentive, being aware always, you know, aware is connection and protection. So one part of that formula would be being open to seeing, you know, seeing yeah. is not only confined to the eye, seeing right. is a way of taking in information. So one part of that would be being aware, practicing awareness, practicing awareness expansion. But I think something else that you had mentioned that actually helps push it along faster, further, better, whatever words a person would choose to use would be gratitude by taking on the idea. Well, could that possibly be what they were talking about? Well, yes. Well, then thank you. The, that thank you helps to push that current along. So it kind of would open up more of your peripheral awareness senses, because as you are grateful, you are again stating an intention, which will call back to you another reason and another reason and another reason to be grateful. And so doing it, your awareness begins to expand. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. That was very nicely. I, I understood that mantra. So thank <laughs> you very much. We are at the bottom of the hour. Gosh, time does fly when you're having fun. Would you give out your contact information, Madra, how the listening audience can find you and more about your powerful work? Okay, my website is uh, cranialvisions.com. My email address is motherwind, 
fourteen at gmail dot com. Yeah, listening audience, if you happen to be in the Memphis area, make sure you consider a visit to our office. And if not, she does do uh, long distance um, sessions. So make sure you check that out. Madra, again, I'm going back to the divine principle, not not as a shameless plug, but just a fact that there's some very powerful information <clears throat> in this particular work. It took eight years of my life. Those eight years of my life were pretty much in unbroken meditation as much as possible. But this particular piece says... Um, as you continue to awaken, everything will come into clearer, clearer view. The pace of change will quicken for you and synchronized phenomena will occur more frequently. The more you can successfully navigate using the compass of synchronicity, the more effective you will be as the captain of your own master ship. Then nothing will slip by you unmonitored and the wake of your past will be replaced with your own will power. This is how you will evolve. My point of reading that particular passage is, we are waking up as a world. The world is waking up. Now, if you're looking out into the world and you see ISIS and you see terrorism, yeah, it's great to recognize those movements of energy in your life or in the global life. I get it. But when this becomes your post and this becomes your news feed on Fox News or whatever it is that you're taking in this stuff, because as you're taking this stuff, you, you, you do have an output and you're vibrating. My point is we are waking up as a planet. We are. And the fact that we are doing that as we're doing that, we are more, all taking on more attributes of the divine. The divine is the creator. So we're taking on creative attributes. And as we begin to do this, the process of creation through us begins to happen at an accelerated rate. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, awareness is the raising of the consciousness as well. And and for, you know, I myself, again, I emphasize that I, I, I was it was brought to my awareness back when my life began to change back in the early 2000s, how empathic I was. And although I always knew I was sensitive, I had no idea to what level until they my guidance specifically showed me. And what they showed me is that and one of the messages that my daughter um, when she was growing up, one of the things that she said to me that that went right into my heart is at one point in life when we were discussing drama and some things going on, she said to me, well, mom, the great thing about you is that you don't allow things to consume you. And I thought, wow, I think that's a compliment. <laughs> and so <laughs> as I moved forward in my life, I thought that is a huge uh, a, a skill and ability because so many people do get consumed by what's going on around them and what's going on on the world, uh, in, in the in the world and around them and and coming across the airwaves. And what my guidance taught me is that's something I can't focus on. You know when. It's one thing to know about something, you know, say the floods in Texas and all what's going on. But to focus on that, you're just giving energy to the chaos and the, the catastrophic destruction that's taking place right now, as opposed to holding it in a higher vibration, focusing on it through love and light and in raising the vibration and having compassion for everybody, including the planet, including the earth energies that are involved. This is a transitional phase for not just us, but the earth as well. So being aware of it, is different than being consumed by it and not focusing on it every single minute of the day because, again, we know that which we focus on. And if you're going to focus on it, focus on healing. You know, focus on the positive energies, you know, uh, projecting positive energies to that situation. Focus on peace being instilled within each person involved and comfort and surrounding them with love and light. And, you know, some people may say, well, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but, you know, all that, that's, that, you know, spiritual stuff and, and, and um, focusing on like that, that's really not taking any action. It absolutely is. Yeah. It's holding it in a higher vibration. It's holding it in compassion as opposed to holding it in judgment and labeling it. Oh, this is the wrath of God. You know? No, it's not. It's the earth going through changes. Mm, mm. Yeah, I agree. Because if we focus on this is wrath or this particular terrorist group is bad, well, actually, maybe there's a way that we can use that to expand, which is thank you for the lesson and yeah. showing me absolute contrast, which I truly want no part of. 
Right. This is it's showing me what it is I really do want. Um, you know, and we're talking about synchronicity, and right now you get it. I get synchronistic views and glimpses, and John Doe and Jane Doe, we all get these glimpses. I'm really, really excited when we as groups get that synchronicity. I've, I've seen it happen a few times in my life when a group of us, uh, would just all look at each other. <laughs> but we as a collective, when we reach that level to where masses of people see the same experience as a synchronistic alignment, I think we're going to shift leaps and bounds in a matter of moments. Absolutely. I agree with you there. I do. Yeah. So, Madra, Let's talk a little bit about your work with crystal skulls. I'm, I'm really fascinated with this. And um, I, when I walked into your, your office, <laughs> you had like a whole family <laughs> of these things. Um, and by the way, I am enjoying Deleuze, which happens to mean beam of light. Uh, the presence in my home, I, I really, really love it. And like my listening audience, how this plays a major role in your life and the magic it has brought. Um, because the crystal skulls, uh, this and this is what uh, they have expressed to me in my working with them and my guidance as well, uh, they are about consciousness, awareness, and communication. And this is what they um, imparted on me in the very beginning. So when somebody comes to me and goes, you know, so what is it about these crystal skulls? You know, they're about consciousness. They came, they, they surfaced at a time when we were moving into that higher consciousness, when the vibration had shifted on the planet enough that it was time for everybody to uh, really move into that awareness and consciousness. And in doing so, they also represent uh communicating through the higher language or the heart language. And so they, they're all about communication and um, uh, consciousness. And in looking at a crystal skull, you, you know, this is what we associate with wisdom. It is, you know, the head or the it's, it's carved in the shape of the human head. Most of them are. And so this is where we associate wisdom because of our brain being in our skull. So, but they also are said to house the soul. And when you look into the eyes of a crystal skull, it reflects back to you your own soul. And for that reason, some people are very uncomfortable looking into the eyes of a crystal skull because they're here to help us to let go, to transmute, to transcend our fears, our phobias, uh, uh, anything that is holding us back. Um, any old energies in that manner, even uh, that's been projected down onto us and even for the planet. So they're not just here to help us as humanity, uh, as life on the planet. They're here to assist the planet as well. Being of crystals, crystals come from the planet. You know, they are they are alive. And so they carry that live energy, even once they're uh, carved into a crystal skull. So they represent that consciousness that we're moving into. And in working with the crystal skull, I tell people, you know, once you're ready to work with the crystal skull, you have um, expressed your desire to the universe that you're ready to take on that transformation that it's offering you. And, you know, I've experienced what I've experienced in my own life. There is not another tool out there that will facilitate that transformation for you when you're really ready to embrace it. Or, or John Doe wants to buy a crystal skull. I mean, he's, there's a metaphysical shop right down the street five minutes away. Can he just go buy one and have it work? He absolutely can. He absolutely can. Because what he does once he once he buys that skull, um, we're always guided to that which we're supposed to be working with, whether it's a skull or crystal or some other tool. Absolutely. So you're guided to when you express that desire there again, that's part of that synchronicity. The universe guides you to that which you're supposed to be working with. You may not know anything about the skulls. You may not know anything about the crystal itself. But once you start working with it, it's going to teach you all about it. And it is is just that desire once you purchase that skull you know and making that setting that intention that I will find the perfect skull for me or I will find the perfect tool for me uh, to be led to that skull to work with then that skull is going to help you to learn not only about yourself but about the skull about the, the stone that it's carved out of about the properties because you're going to be inclined to do your own research on it you know if it's if it's finding someone who knows about crystals if it's finding you know once you find once you know what kind of crystal it is is you can Google the properties, and what you're going to find is synchronistically, it's exactly <laughs> the stone you need to be working with. You know, so then you're going to program it. You're gonna you're going to program it to be your 
I use this term lightly and they, they know that I have a sense of humor and the sense of humor I have, but that's going to be your pet rock. And it's, <laughs> and it's going to give you a name to work with. You know, sure. all you have to do is ask it. And so, and then it begins to work with you and giving you guidance. This is a focal tool now. It's become a focal tool for us as physical beings to hold in our hand and see the magic of guidance unfolding in our life something that we can tangibly touch and connect with. So back to synchronicity, John Doe didn't just get off the sofa in a whim to go to the metaphysical shop just to browse around. He was likely prompted as to why he walks out of the store with that skull in his hand. Right. <laughs> right. right. So that's your life on purpose. Okay, so John Doe buys this crystal skull. Now, you mentioned these skulls alive, which I agree with. You know, you think about the skull. Your voice in your head does not sound like your voice when you play your voice back and listen. It sounds totally different. So there is an amplifier there. That being said, and these skulls are alive would you say from your experience or the skull or the energies embodied in the skulls or, or are they responding from some other locale now that being said I know that I'm embodied in this body but who I really am is not in this body I'm channeling what we know as Keith through this vehicle of this body but my point is are they incarnated in these skulls or are the skulls a doorway to where they can chat through from whatever dimension that such energies that embody crystal skulls do? I've been shown by my guidance where when the master carver uh, begins to carve the stone, the stone itself tells him I'm to be carved in the shape of a crystal skull. And as he begins carving it, it begins taking on the energy of the uh, being that it will become. And it also begins in that moment making its way to the guardian or the person that will be working with it. So what I've been shown is that they are they they have that essence themselves that come in as they're being carved. This is by choice. So they're being incarnated as they're being carved. Um, and then they, they do serve as uh, portals in connecting to other dimensions as well. So, you know, they, they, they open up so much for us in so many ways. Um, and then by giving us something physical to connect with uh, on the planet, as you hold one in your hand, um, it's, it's amazing to, to connect in with it um, at a vibrational level. From the chat room, Profundity asked the question, would that programming be conscious on the user's part or subconscious by the inner self? Both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah both. Absolutely. Because mine, you know, I like you said, I, I have a collection of them. They are my oracle, all of them. And they, I have... Uh, the reason I, I had someone say to me at one point, well, if they're so powerful, how come you have so many of them? And I said, because <laughs> each one of them, uh, uh, most of them were given to me, but each one of them being of different stones and, and different style carvings, each one of them came to me at a time on my journey when that was exactly what I needed synchronistically. Um, as I looked up the properties of the stone, the message that it gave me, the name that it gave me was all very synchronistic, uh, synchronistic about where I was on my journey, where I uh, intended to go on my journey, you know, what my intentions were. And so it was it, and they serve the same purpose for others. So each one of them represents a certain part of my journey in the last 15 years specifically that they came into my life from guidance saying, okay, we're here, we got you back, you know, we're the cavalry, we're here for you now. So, um, and believe me, you know, back before 2000, if you had told me that I would be working with crystal skulls and even some of the other things that I'm working with in my life at this time, I would have just looked at Jen, laughed and said, I really don't know who you're talking about, but I don't think it's me, you know, but the way it's all unfolded with the crystal skulls having come into my life, the way they did when I already had learned and studied over the course of my lifetime since I was in my teens, literally studied healing and uh, hypnosis and reading uh, cards and reading energy and working with uh, healing. Uh, all of this came into play when the crystal skulls came in. Every bit of it came in through the crystal skulls for me. And at the time, I had no idea how I would possibly make it work out that way you know it's one of those things you aspire to do and it sounds magical and and all but in the moment i thought well but really it's kind of just a dream because i really don't see how i would possibly make all of that come into play for me and then the crystal skulls came in and it absolutely all absolutely unfolded and so what i've learned through them for me 
is that uh, the universe used something that really pushed me out of my comfort zone to bring me into myself. And so now when the universe says to me, Madra, you will do this, I'm like, all right, number one, make it happen. <laughs> yes. Madra, we are about a quarter to the hour. I did want to bring up at this point, if we could, talk a little bit about this experience that you and I are going to have in the very near future with Swamji. For those who are not familiar with who Swamji uh, Viswayogi is, this is a self-realized God-man. Um, if you can imagine, the masculine and the feminine aspect of the universe gave birth to a son. Literally. This man would be the personification of these energies. Um, I had the blessed opportunity to interview him last year. I had the blessed opportunity to sit in front of him and tell me about my past lives and tell me about my future life. Um, and, and of course, I use past and future lives in quotes. And I'll take it literally. I understand the, the jargon, is, but we have to use words to describe, right? right. Madra and I have the opportunity in the very near future to go visit Swamji and um, the experience that you're going to have happen for you, Madra, is going to be uh, just an amazing synchronicity reflection of yourself. It's going to be as probably a thousand times more amplified than gazing in the eyes of your most powerful crystal skull that you have. So I'm really, really looking forward to that experience with you. I'm excited as well. I, I am excited. And since our session uh, the other day and that information come through, because again, that's not something that I actually focused on, except that each and every day I focus on being better at, at what I'm doing in, in the uh, aspect of helping others, you know, being that clear and perfect channel each and every day that I get out of the way, that ego gets out of the way, that I can do the work of uh, the uh, Christ consciousness, you know, that I can fulfill that because I know without a doubt that that's why I'm here at this time. And um, so when you uh, offered me that opportunity and that information came through at the time, I, I thought, oh, wow, okay, this is what I've been feeling. And I did because there was, and you know, you always know, well, for me, I know when when that's my guidance's way of going, are you paying attention here, you know, because I felt that emotion come in with it. And it was like, you know, how it takes your breath away for just a moment. And I thought, yes. oh, this is what they've been talking about. OK, yes. they've been preparing me for this almost for the last um, year. Yes. And uh, when I interviewed, I I, I, I likely suspect that Swamji is going to join us here on Center of Light Radio and I'm going to be able to interview him. And as I mentioned f before, that seeing is not really confined to your eyes. In fact, it's you can see with your ears if you if you understand the the idea that I'm making here the parallel. It's about taking in information and if not if, but when I do get Swamji on this radio show, keep in mind, again, this is a God-realized man. This is a man who, in this moment, if he desired to tune into Keith Blanchard and his radio show, from wherever he is on the planet, he would know exactly what we're talking about and can recite it back to you. This is truly no joke. Point being is that uh, I'm going to put in a request to have him uh, interviewed here in Center of Light. Uh, he, he talks very, very Hindi, but when this interview does transpire, make sure you bring your heart space. Because it's definitely going to take that, um, and not only your ears, to understand the full message. So I'm looking forward to having Swamji Viswayogi here on Center of Light. I do believe he's going to be coming here like the second or third week of August. And I will keep the listening audience posted on the potential of that. Madra, we got about 10 minutes. Is there any particular topic that you feel uh, called to share with our listening audience at this time? Um, you know, one of the things that I teach, one of the things that I preach, I guess, uh, is one of what one of the masters came to me and said, and I think it's always worth sharing. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, the master, uh, De Joao Cole, uh, came to me in a vision and he said to me, discipline is everything. And he was in my face for like 24 hours with that message. Discipline is everything. And I was like, okay, I got it already, you know. Um, and at the time, I had no idea. Uh, because I, I'm hearing discipline is everything, but we're thinking 
I'm thinking along the line of the physical and, you know, how we apply life and, you know, overeating or, or drinking or whatever, you know, how you apply it in that manner. And as I have moved into, you know, these uh, times that I'm in now and my work continues to evolve and my own consciousness continues to evolve, um, I'm so getting that part of discipline is everything uh, with your thought, with your words, you know, understanding the vibration and the consciousness and, and how people, you know, when people come to me for um, healing services of any kind um, and after just talking with them on an energetic level, I can tell where they're not using that discipline, so to speak, and how, you know, they're giving away their power. And too often we do this. And so that that discipline that is everything has to do with our energy and our consciousness of how we expend that energy, where we put that energy, uh, what energy we allow into our own energetic field, what energy we allow ourselves to be caught up in or drawn into, um, or, you know, so, and then also understanding that once we get into that place, you don't, again, you don't, absolutely have to let yourself be consumed by it. The discipline part says, I'm going to observe before I sit here and pass judgment and label and, and go into that mindset. So the discipline part of it really, and it's also uh, attached to the um, honoring and nurturing your own spirit and soul. That discipline to do that, you know, when, when people are ready to wake up, when they're ready to move into that consciousness and that awareness, you have to be disciplined and dedicated and committed to your own process because if you're not, no one's going to do it for you. Is there a particular discipline that you would, would suggest? Meditation, obviously, of course. Um, but there's some people who want what you're saying. They want to expand. They want to wake up. And they don't have access to, say, for example, the outlets that you and I have. Right. That, But just so happen to come across this radio show. What do you suggest as disciplines? Um one of the simple things, uh, meditation always is one of those first and foremost. Prayer is an excellent way of discipline because you're, you're, you're allowing yourself, you don't have to, but allowing yourself, anytime you can get somewhere, be still, be quiet. Be in the moment, be in the now. You know, being in nature is one of the easiest, fastest ways to raise your vibration, to um, be disciplined enough to be in that moment of where you are and experiencing those energies and that vibration. So being in nature is always uh, an absolute wonderful way of being disciplined enough to connect in uh, uh, other than prayer and meditation. Um, if you have access to CDs, you know, or uh, the Internet and YouTube, there's a lot of different uh, types of meditations out there that will help you to get into that still quiet place. I know for myself, 20, 25 years ago, all of a sudden I was in this place that I realized I had to get out of my head in order to move forward on my own spiritual journey. And so I began listening to CDs, uh, one in particular, that um, had uh, subliminal messages in it, but it had all of the nature sounds and the tones, and, and it also had the brain wavelengths in it. And the first time I ever listened to that CD, it was like a high that I have never experienced because it absolutely shut my brain down. It absolutely quieted all of the mind chatter. And so I was able to, to be in a completely different world, literally. So I began listening to that CD two and three times a day for up to five years at least. Till I got to a place where I could sit down now and just completely, you know, shut it down and go into that place. That's, you know, that's what I desire to do. Most people can't get out of their heads. We're conditioned to be in our heads. So we can't really rise above that. It is, it is um, something that you have to work at and you have to train yourself in whatever manner of doing, you know, utilizing prayer beads as a focus tool, you know, is, is, uh, will help you to, to uh, balance the right and left brain and also help you to be in that place of discipline in the moment. So, you know, those are simple little exercises that you can do. Um, but um, when, again, when you, when you really have that desire, you're going to be guided to the perfect place, thing, experience, person, you know, to assist you in that moment. So when the desire is great enough, um, the universe, again, absolutely conspires to make it happen. 
as with John Doe, happening to go to the metaphysical story ends up going home with the skull. Right. So it's it's really you know I always support the idea of meditation. First and foremost, it is it is it is imperative. So is prayer because you know to have full communication, you need both sides. You need to talk and you need to listen. Right. But it's really, God bless you too, because it's really all intention. Some people may find uh, the particular meditation like you had and do it two, three times a day. You're stating intention. You're opening yourself up daily. Some people may read the Course in Miracles book every morning. So it's really, these are all somewhat excuses to tap into, to go into the self. So I, it's, it's people, how do you formally meditate? Well, until you become a Buddhist monk, it's, there really is no formality. Right. <laughs> uh, um, so Madra, I really appreciate your presence here in Center of the Light. Uh, we have a little, little more time. Would you leave us with a final high vibrational thought? One of the messages that's come through the, the last weekend's meditations that was extremely powerful, and I've heard this before, but this is something that they're really coming in with now, is to remember that by each one of us stepping up into the responsibility of our own choices and our own journey, raising our vibration, raising our own consciousness, we are doing so for hundreds of thousands of others at the same time. Would you give out your contact information once more, please? Uh, it's cranialvisions.com with an email address of motherwind14 at gmail.com. Madra Gail Little, thank you for being a powerful presence here in Center of Light Radio. Thank you so much for having me, Keith. It's been an awesome opportunity and blessing. As I always say to my guests, who if I invite you on the first time, that door does swing open to you a second time, you can bet. I look forward to it. Thank you, love. Everyone, Madra Gay Little here in Center of Light Radio. Wow, what a powerful show. Powerful, powerful show. Love everything she stands for. And I'm telling you, what she did to me last week was truly, truly a blessing bestowed upon me. I'm going to leave you with a little more from the Divine Principle about synchronicity. It's a very, very good subject, very important subject. Um, being in meditation with spirit, I received. Many of you can already feel the changes that are going on within yourselves but you must look for the synchronicity outside because your progress progress can best be gauged by viewing what is going on around you conscious practitioners spend at least a little time each day reflecting on their lives day by day day by day week by week month by month year by year this lets them see patterns and gives them accurate clues as to why they are where they are their self-reflection is the springboard that lets them make the best choice at any God-given moment. And since they are always looking to find a better way to flow with the universal current, they take full advantage of the coincidences that happen in their lives, the synchronicity, and use them to decode signals from the higher self. As a result, their quality of life is enhanced. By aligning themselves with universe's forces, spiritual practitioners are able to tap into them for the betterment of themselves and the rest of mankind. The road to, their road to God is dramatically shortened to only a few lives because they have chosen to learn while they live life and not relying solely on the life overview you all come to expect when you die. Everyone, Keith Blanchard here. Center of Light Radio, Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Again, I want to say thank you to Inception Radio Network. Next week, my guest will be Laura Watson, and we will be talking everything angels. She will be doing angel readings on the air, I do believe. Powerful lady, most amazing guest. Um, she's going to tell you things about angels that you haven't begun to have learned. Uh, trust me. Um, just remember tonight when you lay down, you go to bed. And take those breaths, those intentful breaths, to bring about the magic, the power, the synchronicity, all that you deserve in your life. After just a little bit of breathing, you're going to tap into the part of yourself that is real, the part of you that is authentic. It lies just in wait behind that which you know as your breath. Remember, spread the light and always 
ease into bliss. Keith Anthony Blanchett, good evening.